in today. Um, you know, when you when you live, certain stuff happens, so you gotta get situated. But I am uh, extremely glad to be with you guys tonight, and um, I hope you can hear me. I'm making, I'm making sure everything's plugged in here. I'm ready to go. Okay, so uh, welcome to What the Quote. I'm your host, Tawana, and this is the podcast where uh, we use quotes to create kind humans. Um, and as you know, if you have been to the podcast before, you know that um, I created a theme song. So uh, you ready to listen to it? Here we go. <laughs> the quote, we create kind humans who speak kindness, show kindness, be a kind human, be a kind human. Hey, so I am very excited this evening. I actually have a quote that really brings back a lot of memories um, for me and hopefully for you too. And the quote is by Robert Fulgham. I hope that I am pronouncing his name correctly. Um, he actually wrote a book and I'm using the title of the book as a quote that I'll be speaking from today, which is, all I really need to know, I learned in kindergarten. So are you, you know, do you agree? Did you, do you remember kindergarten? Do you remember what you learned in kindergarten? So for me, it was filled with um, a lot of great memories that I'm gonna talk about. So, but you know, I like to dance. And so before I get into the quote, we gonna dance for 30 seconds because it relieves stress and gets your heart heartbeat pumping. So here we go. Y'all ready? Why oh, I gotta do my mouth like this when I dance? You know, I got to be a bit of a clown. Did um, did y'all dance? Did y'all dance at all? Okay, so here we go. So the quote is by Robert Fulgham. And he also has a book uh, from the same quote that I'm using today called, All I Really Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. So this is um, so interesting to me because I love kindergarten. <laughs> so I live in Indianapolis. I went to school one. O-N-E. That was, <laughs> that was the name of it. And I probably lived um, maybe five or six blocks from school one on Denny. And I used to walk to school. Can you imagine a kindergartner walking to school? But you know, that was, you know, that's, we're living, we were living in different times now. It was safe for me to walk to school as a kindergartner. Um, and so for me, my kindergarten teacher was Miss Walton. And I have often thought of Miss Walton quite a bit throughout my years and especially this past year because of the the gift that I have given myself in uh, taking a personal development class. And so I've thought a lot about Miss Walton 
and her class. And the, the beautiful thing for, so I'm going to describe how kindergarten was for me. And I'm hoping that um, it will trigger memories of how, when you were in kindergarten. But Miss Walton, she was like a tooth fairy or <laughs> um, my a fairy godmother. I mean, she was such a beautiful person. I remember she had beautiful hair and beautiful skin. That's what I remember about Miss Walton. And I also remember that Miss Walton had what I would classify as a huge dollhouse. It was like life size. It took up like more than half of the room. So now this is, you know, this is coming from somebody in kindergarten. So maybe it wasn't that big, but for me, it was a huge playland for me that I could play with dolls and just cook and it had a stove and um, it was, it was very, very, I don't know. I just felt like I was in a a fairy tale land when I walked in there. I mean, and I just remember playing. Um, and it was really, really a a wonderful time to be in kindergarten. So I I I thought of the quote because um I think that there are a lot of things that we learn as kids that sometimes we lose as we go into adulthood. And, you know, I can remember in kindergarten learning kind of like the lay of the land and how, um, and how things happened. Like if somebody, if you wanted something, you would say, please. Or if somebody gave you something, you would say, thank you. And um, also I learned, hey, look both ways before you cross the street. And so even um, some of those things, like literally when you cross the street, look both ways, but also if you are at an intersection in your life and you're deciding, okay, which way to go? Are you looking left? Are you looking right? Like, what are you, what are you doing? Are you looking both ways? Are you just, you know, going along the path that you would normally go on? So those are some of the things that I specifically remember about kindergarten is that it was just um, a beautiful foundation for me to learn um, a lot of new things. So that is one of the things that I want to bring out of this conversation in um, talking about this quote from Robert Fulgham is, in kindergarten, I learned a lot of new things. And I think that sometimes as adults, we don't think of learning as something that we need to continue to do. And so in kindergarten, like you're learning lots of new, you're learning lots of words, uh, sentences, remember story problems, (laughs) remember story problems. Like I was not really a fan of story problems, but you know, it, you learned a lot of new things. Okay. So remember, um, did anybody else have a line leader? when you were in kindergarten, you know, like we had to stand in line. And then of course, you know, everybody wanted to be the line leader because you could be first (laughs) and lead the line. And so even like when we were in line, if we were in double file, we had to hold hands. I know, listen, with COVID, we in 2020, we can't hold hands, but Like those are some of the things like you had uh, a line partner that you were with, that you guys were both responsible, you know, you were responsible for each other. And um, so it was just, it's, it was a really 
beautiful time of learning new things, learning um, to sh- learning to share, you know, because <laughs> you know maybe you you know you might want to play for pay, play with a doll all day, but you know maybe you needed to share that with Sharon or I don't know Tamika. So you had to learn, you know, that you had to share your toys when you were in kindergarten. And so I, for me, I think that learning and learning new things is one of the things that as adults, maybe we don't embrace as often as we could or should. And even um, as people come into the studio, they're very apprehensive of learning something new when really it's for me, it's about just opening yourself up to the possibilities. Who knows? Might like it. But if you try it, you won't know if you like it. And so as it relates to us as adults, just um, even if it is, okay, so here's an example. I got a, a cricket. So I don't know if you know what a cricket is, but um, it's this machine that you can like make all kinds of stuff on. Um, you can make t-shirts, you can, you know, monogram glasses, you can, I mean, it's it's like a bajillion things that that I can do with this cricket. And it's 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 been a great experience for me to learn something new, to try it out. You know, one, I was, um, you know, I'm having some merchandise that I'm going to be doing for uh, being kind and with the quote. And so I was kind of playing around with some of the fonts. And so I learned that some fonts are better than others, depending on what you're using them for. Some th- some fonts are too thin, others are too... So those are some of the things that I've learned. But the things that I have made as a result of me learning, like I am so proud of, like I am. You know, if y'all saw them, Maybe I wouldn't be proud, (laughs) but for me to like deal with numbers and machinery, like that is big for me. And so I was, I was really proud of myself and I thought, Hmm, could I go buy this stuff? You know, of course. Yes. But me seeing me learning and making something for the first time was like, oh my gosh, like this is the greatest thing ever. And it's kind of like um, this weekend, a couple people came into the field and they were like, we want to buy. Oh my gosh, are, are you selling these? And I'm like, yes, I am. However, comma, there's still time for you to create your own. Because I think that there's something, it does something to, um, to us to do something that we never thought we would be able to do. And I have seen time and time again, when people come into the studio, how proud they are of themselves. Like it is so beautiful to watch somebody come in and they think, I'm not going to be doing, I'm just here to support. I'm just here for this. And then like halfway through to see them start to shift because they recognize what it is <laughs> that they're creating. And it really does look great. And so I, that's one thing that I am always pushing myself to do is to try new things and to do things that I am uncomfortable doing. Okay, so I... Um, had a talk with um, Aisa today. She's been on What the Quote before, and we were talking about social media because she also has a fabulous podcast called Gift to Shift. Um, So please like and subscribe. But we were talking about social media. And ironically, I do have a podcast, but (laughs) I... 
I am still on the struggle bus as it relates to um, posting. Hence, it's, and, and here's what I'm going to say. So posting in a manner that um, I really need to facilitate in order to do my podcast and, and things like that. So like there's like a whole system for <laughs> posting with podcasting, you know, to get the word out and to get people excited about. And I have just been like, oh my gosh, like, wow. Um, and so, but what I, what I realized today was that that can be a stretch for me. And maybe I can use this as a learning moment to step outside of my comfort zone and do something that maybe I am not so comfortable doing. So one of the things that I've learned from kindergarten is to try new things, never stop learning, and it's never too late. Okay, don't forget that. Um, so number two, actually this week, so number two is we took naps in kindergarten. <laughs> And so uh, this was this was wonderful because I love naps, number one. And originally I was going to do this podcast, this episode about self-care. But then I was like, in kindergarten, we was doing self-care because we was taking naps. And so, you know... I love naps. Okay, remember when you were in kindergarten, you had that little um, roll-up mat that you would lay down and take a nap on? Did anybody else have a mat? And so um, that was one of the things that I remembered about kindergarten. And I like naps. Like I was not the one who <laughs> didn't want to take a nap. Like I would get my mat out and go to sleep during nap time. And so for as it roll as that continued as an adult, you know, sometimes we go, 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 and we don't take time to rest, to relax, and to really um, give ourselves some self-care and self-love. And so that we can rejuvenate. And so there are times, so so the, this month in October, I have really, um, I have really focused on what I call radical self-care. This is, this is what I felt like I needed for the month of October. And I'm, you know, even going to spill it over in November. And so sometimes um, radical self-care for me is not necessarily um, where you have to go spend money. You, you know, I like to, but um, it's not something that you necessarily have to do. So here's an example. So Suzette, um, one of my friends from high school, she talked about this place called the Salt House. And I've been there twice. They have like the salt room because salt is, you know, this like detox and cleansing. Um, and then they also have a sauna where you just sweat. <laughs> so <laughs> I did the salt room first, and then I did the sauna. Both fantastic experiences. Um, so of course, if you have the um, option or if you're able to support a small business during this time, absolutely, go do it. But if not, get you some Epsom salt. You know, you know mom and them, big mama, they, you know, if something was sore, they told you to go take a, a Epsom salt bath. 
you can get you some Epsom salt, put it in a tub, get you some candles, relax. It's, you know, there you go. I mean, I think they have Epsom salt at Walmart for, I don't know, maybe $2 a bag from Trader Joe or wherever you go. So if it's not taking a nap, maybe it's a salt bath. Maybe it is a walk. Maybe it is whatever it is that speaks to you so that you can take some time to take care of yourself. For me, um, you know, I talked a couple weeks ago about me um, shifting and going to mobile and online and not having a brick and mortar. And when I tell you I have shifted as of today, <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, this is fantastic because I get a little more time to myself, you know, and I'm, you know, maybe I might be able to take a nap on a Saturday afternoon. And so it's really just um, in kindergarten, this whole time of taking naps and having a bath with even Diane said essential oils or steaming up the bathroom like Suzette said like there's lots of things that you can do at home that don't cost any money so one of the one of my favorite things now that I do is meditating I know, I know you like I cannot sit there because my mind keeps, <laughs> things keep running through my mind and I get it, but it's a practice. It's a practice and just being still enough, letting the thoughts come and go is really another form of taking a nap. It really is. And so, you know, I just signed up for this meditation. It's an eight-week meditation class that I'm taking because and we have to meditate an hour. Ooh, cha, Ooh, cha. We got to meditate <laughs> from 45 minutes to an hour every day. But I'm excited because it's a time for me to be still. And not just just to be still for me. And so one of these episodes, I'm going to do a, a episode about meditation and some of the benefits of it. Um, and even before then, some of the things that I'm mentioning, I'm going to put those in the show notes so that you can. So that you can take a nap in whatever way you can as an adult. And so, um, you know, just to give back to yourself a little bit, um, one of the things that I am realizing is that for a lot of us, 2020 has put us in situations that we've never been in. Like, you know, today, most of the time, I am okay with wearing the mask because I have to wear it all day at work. But today I was like, ooh, boy, you know, <laughs> this is, you know, a couple times, even when I had a break, I, I just went out to my car or outside just so I could take the mask off. And so even that may be causing a level of stress that we have not been used to. And so it's even more important to just take a few minutes, you know, get a massage or, you know, pay your kids to, you know, rub your shoulders, whatever it takes, um, just to really give yourself more of what you need. So for me, even as an adult, I love naps. I mean, it could be, I could get a good 10 minutes or 
20 minutes and be good. I know some people, they can't take naps, which is, you know, which is fine. Maybe that's not your cup of tea. Well, maybe it's a walk for you. And so, but really realizing what are some things that I can do to give to myself that can really rejuvenate me. Because one of the things about a nap or getting sleep is you wake up rejuvenated. Like that's one of the great things about it. And so as an adult, just finding what that thing is for you. Okay, so number three, and this is the final one, is um, in kindergarten, we played a lot. Games, jacks, hopscotch, hula hoop, (laughs) tag. Um, let me see what else we had puzzles. We had, uh, what else did we have in kindergarten? Let me see. We had plenty of books to read. Even some of them, the books that the, the pages popped up on the inside when you opened it. I mean, we played a lot in kindergarten. And so are you playing? Christine said jump rope. Yes, jump rope. (laughs) I mean, we had so, we played so much. And even after kindergarten was over, I remember hopscotch and jacks, you know, I mean, double dutch. I mean, you like they played so much kids. Uh, What happened? Like, you know, even... Suzette is saying puzzles and remember when we pretended, you know, remember we just printed, daydreamed, imagined, thought about, you know, when is the last time that you did something like that, that you played? When is the last time that you played? You know, one of the things that, oh, remember coloring books? <laughs> like I love to color. And so now as an adult, they have adult coloring books. You know, I bought some jacks, um, cards, like you name it. Like what? When is the last time that you played as an adult? Because in kindergarten, we played all the time. And so even Taking the time to laugh, to tell a joke, even if it's corny, you know, of course, I am one of the funniest people I know. So I laugh all the time. And, you know, sometimes I make it my goal to make other people laugh because I am just that funny. You may not have me in your personal circle. So maybe, (laughs) maybe you should be the funny person, you know, just kind of, um, just kind of having a good time and not being so serious and having fun and laughing. Like those are some of the things that we need to remember about kindergarten, because those are some of the great things that we've learned. And for some of us, like growing up and being an adult has taken all of the fun and all of the pretending and all of the imagining. You know, that's one of the reasons why I absolutely love vision boards. You know, a lot of people do them at the end of the year, at the start of the year, but that's one reason why I love for adults to do a vision board because they have to stop and think about what would they like to create in their life? Because so many adults, they don't, they don't take a moment to think. So if I could do something, if I could live someplace, if I could start a business, if I could cook a meal or learn to cook, or whatever the case might be like, what would that be? 
For me, it's a Tesla. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. For you, it might be something else. But really taking some time to really think about what does play look like for you? What does it look like? Like if, you know, it's kind of like when clients tell me that they want to be happy and I'm like, okay, what is that? Tell me, paint me a picture. Like what does happy look like to you? And so if you're not able to articulate that, what does happy look like for you? What does play look like for you? Take some time and start with that. Because in order to recognize it, you got to know what it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you got to know, you got to know like what does that look like for you? And so for me, play looks like, um, I know this probably doesn't, probably doesn't sound like play, but I like to just do nothing <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes I like to just do nothing. There are other times where um, I just like to dance because I, I can be free. I can be silly. You know, I don't have any judgment about around me dancing. I swear I can do the moonwalk um, almost as good as Michael Jackson, <laughs> but not quite. Um, you know, I, I like to, I like to color. I like to create things. Um, I like, you know, so those are some of the things that I like to do. I love to read. I love, um, to watch Hallmark movies, you know, I love to do that. Those are some of the things that really rejuvenate me. I love puzzle. You know, those are some of the things that I like. Um, so I've, I've probably done, I think we probably maybe one, two, I think we have two puzzles here. Um, that I've done, but I love puzzles. And so those are some of the things that I like that really help me to play, kind of take some time away, decompress. And so really finding out what that is for you. So, you know, we can all go back to kindergarten. <laughs> so um, the quote for today was by Robert Fulgham, and it is, all I really need to know I learned in kindergarten. So, um, and the three things that I had learned was um, continue to learn new things, take naps, and play. Now, I'm looking, you know, I moved some stuff around. My hat is at Mimosa and a Masterpiece my coaching hat. I know y'all are so disappointed that you cannot see me with my hat on. I know. But you know, today, you know, we just, we just have to make it work because my hat's at the studio. Um, and really, I mean, I kind of, this episode has been the coaching corner, kind of. Um, so what I would say is to um, learn something new, take a nap, and play. And so that something new could be learning how to talk. <laughs> that is my new favorite thing is TikTok. Some talented people on TikTok. Um, it could be um, starting a gratitude journal. That's something really easy. It could be, um, let's see, what else could you learn to do? You could learn to go live on Facebook or Instagram. Um, 
so I'm sure there's something new. You, of course, you they have lots of free classes online, meditating, um, how to write a book. They have yoga. They have work. They have tons of free classes online now. Um, and so you could try that. Um, and the other thing is, I say take naps. Take, of course, because that's one of the things that we did in um, kindergarten. But you um, can, you know, kind of figure out what can you do to detox? What can you do to take care of yourself? What can you do to put your own, in case the cabin pressure, the oxygen drops, put your own oxygen mask on first? Like, what can you do to do that first so that you can, so that your cup can overflow so that you can give to other people? So, Figure out what your nap taking looks like and then play this week, whatever that looks like for you. Jax, I don't know. Uh, what was it? Rubik's Cube? <laughs> Shoots and ladders? I don't know. Simon, remember Simon Says, the game Simon Says, the thing you pushed on? Um, so just remember to play and have a great time, everybody. I, um, if you haven't read the book by Robert, Fulgham. It might, you know, maybe that it might be a good book for you to read. Um, it is called All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Um, so some of his things that he learned in kindergarten, I'll tell you a couple, is share everything, play fair, don't hit people, put things back where they belong. And I think another one was clean up after yourself or something like that. So those are some of the things that he shared. And so, um, oh my gosh, Diane said freeze tag. Do y'all remember freeze tag from kindergarten? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I hope this brought back some memories for you. It did for me. It really did for me. So listen, I need y'all to like, subscribe, share, and review what the quote on Apple and Spotify. And you can also join, like, and subscribe the YouTube channel. It's a hoot. Um, so I hope you have had a great time. I have had a fabulous time um, with you guys this evening. It's been such a treat. Do you know, hey, I'm starting to write the lyrics to my song, to my theme song that I'm going to sing. I'm going to have one verse. <laughs> I'm going to have one verse and a hook. So I'm, trying, I'm putting that together. So I know you want to hear my theme song. You ready? Here it goes. And with the quote, we create kind humans who speak kindness, show kindness, be a kind human, be a kind human. See you guys next week. Be kind.